and welcome. Some people love to do bindings and others find it a chore. And I'm sort of in the middle. Um, sometimes I find it a chore, but knowing that I'm at the end uh, gets me excited. So I'm giving you an option. And this option is called a rollover binding. And this is something where if you look at antique quilts, you will see quite often where the quilt maker either rolled the back fabric, the backing to the front to cover the raw edge, or they rolled over the front to the back to cover the raw edge. And in this video, what I've done with this one is I've taken the back flannel and I've trimmed it and I rolled it over to the front. And there's a couple reasons why I did this. And when I'm deciding to do a binding on a quilt, the things that I take into consideration are who am I giving it to? How old is the person? What is the occasion? And what is going to be of the intended function? And so this is going to a toddler, uh, my uh, great niece and her fiance. Uh, it's going to their youngest son, and he's a toddler. And I made it big enough for uh, him to make tents, uh, just like my kids used to when they were that age, toddlers preschoolers, you know, that sort of thing. And so I wanted a binding that would take a beating and I wanted a binding that would be uh, fast and easy. If this were intended to be a wedding gift or an anniversary gift, some type of a special occasion quilt, I would have done a traditional binding where I cut the two and a half inch strip length binding you know, folded it over, ironed it, machine stitched it, and then hand stitched it to the back. But since this is going to a toddler who's going to love it, literally love it up, which is its intention, I decided since I had enough of the backing flannel to just roll the back to the front. So in this video, um, it's all about, you know, when I, once I'm finished machine quilting, I leave a space open so that I'm not quilting all the way to the raw edge. I'm leaving space in between so that when I go to fold over uh, the first part of the fold, because there's two folds. There's the fir first of all, uh, let's see, I'm cutting two inches from the raw edge of the quilt to the raw edge of the backing. So I'm trimming the top and the batting even. And then from there, when I go to cut the backing, I'm cutting it two inches from the raw edge of the quilt top and the batting. And then when I fold it over, the first fold is I fold it over so that that first fold just lightly folds underneath the batting. I'd say about a quarter of an inch to an eighth of an inch.
then I fold the top over and I pin it in place. And in some spots I am ironing it. Um, at the corners, I'm just doing a fold over method. Uh, one edge folded over on top of the other. I am trimming uh, when it's when the raw edge is folded out, when I get to the corner, I trim across uh, that top corner to take out some of the bulk. So that when I'm over flapping this corner, overlapping this corner, it takes out some of the bulk. And then I get it on my machine. I definitely, one of the best tips I can give you is definitely use your walking foot. Don't do this without a walking foot. It is a lot of layers to go through. Uh, the walking foot does help. And I'm, I just start, you know, on one side, work all the way around. Um, in the video, you'll see how I handle the corners. And then when I get to the ends, I just overlap and it's done quick, easy, it accomplishes the job. Threads, always threads, isn't it? <laughs> and also with this quilt, it is, uh, the quilting is strictly utilitarian. Just to hold the three layers together, nothing fancy, straight line stitches. I showed this quilt several months ago and I can leave a link below where you can see this quilt plus I believe two others quilt tops that I made when I made this one for my two great nephews and my great niece. Yes, yes. There were three of them that I was making together because they're going to be growing up together. So binding the rollover method made easy. Um, to recap tips, uh, trim Trim the top and the batting even if you're going to be rolling the back to the front. If you're rolling the front to the back, you're going to be trimming the backing and the batting even. Then you're going to be cutting um, the fold over two inches wider than the raw edge of your quilt top and your batting. The first fold, you're going to fold that raw edge under the batting about a quarter, scant quarter inch, and then you're going to roll it over to the top, pin it in place all the way around, and then start stitching. Use a walking foot. When you get to the corner, oh, there's a thread. There. Okay, when you get to the corner, we're gonna sew all the way to the end and then back up so that we're starting right on the edge of the next fold down the next side. So I'm gonna stitch all the way on this edge to the end, to the end of the quilt. I'm gonna back up to where the next fold starts and then turn. take maybe two more stitches. I'm going to back it up. Stop, needle down, lift the presser foot up, and then turn so that when I turn, 
I'm starting on the fold of that next row, right along the edge, okay? Here we go. I'm gonna back it up a little bit. I like to give that a little back stitch. I'm just gonna continue all the way around. I'm also using um, a number three stitch length, which is a little bit of a longer stitch length on my machine. You'll have to adjust your machine accordingly. Also on my machine, I can adjust the pressure on my presser foot. And I adjust my pressure so that there's a little bit less pressure and that helps um, the walking foot glide over this edge because it is rather thick. And the backing is flannel. So when I turn that uh, edge over, it is, it is quite thick. So there you have it. Rollover binding, simple, easy, try it. It's a great option. It's fast. Uh, consider who you're giving your quilt for, what the occasion is, and just have fun with it. Have fun finishing your quilt. Thank you for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, make a comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. My name is Angela Davis, and I'm the 4M Quilter. Remember, why sleep when you can sew?